What's up, everybody? My name's Kurt Dimer, and you're listening to the Brutally Delicious Podcast. <laughs> One, two, three, four. The Brutally Delicious Podcast. The Brutally Delicious Podcast. The Brutally Delicious Podcast. The Brutally Delicious Podcast. How are you? Hey, I'm Bruce. Good. My part in the arena. Thanks for joining us. Hey, Bruce. Hey, what did you say? Is Rita? Rina? Rina. Yeah. She's Tried all the way over roll the R like a proper Scandinavian person. Uh, Rina. R- Rina. There you go. Yeah. R double I N A. And all right. very cool. Very nice to and, meet both of you. And the jackass yeah. himself is about to join us here in a minute. There's our other partner, Chris. Can Chris. you hear me? He's been sort of AWOL for a while. Chris, welcome back. Thank you. Yay, Once... the bald bastard has joined us. Can you hear me? We can. <laughs> Kurt, that's the bald bastard joining us. That's me. Well, I'm bald. I'm bald. Hey, what's up? What's up? If I, was, if I wasn't wearing headphones, you'd see like a big spare tire because I haven't shaved my head in a while. So I got like this thing that goes around here, you know? It's oh. terrible. Well, I, shave, I shave my head and I wear a beanie because I have a cold with sack. You have what? You, can oh. you, can, you know, your head is probably like mine. You can park some cars up there. Yeah. And have a nice, <laughs> nice. Solar panel for a sex machine. That's what I hear. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, Chris. <laughs> oh my God, that's brilliant! That is brilliant. I can't, so ta- I can't take credit. I, I, I can't take credit for it. I learned that when I was like ten. Nice. Yeah, I think that's all. Yeah, all we have, like, we've been doing this for three years, and this is the first time you've said it. Like, I think you've been holding back, man. Why? <laughs> you know me; I'm a fairly reserved guy. I don't, <laughs> I don't really like doing controversial things. Hey, yeah, that's how I would uh, rate you as a uh, conservative, and not controversial. No, I'm right. very calm, very calm, relaxed, very calm, never... <laughs> very composed. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, yeah. Kurt. Unless we're talking to a conservative, then it all, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding, hey, Kurt, but... <laughs> Kurt, where are you located, Kurt? Right now, I'm sitting in the back of my tour bus in Portland, Maine. Oh, oh. nice. I, I hear Portland, Maine is beautiful. It's been, it's been raining the whole time off that night. We've been up here in the <laughs> East Coast, so I can't, I can't really uh, verify that for you. So the, right. the East Coast is getting fucking hammered this year. Yeah. I mean, it looks nice, but I, uh, it's kind of dreary. By yeah. the way, that that tour bus looks like '70s chic, man. Oh, it's steak and ale, man. Remember that place? Steak and <laughs> yes, it was yeah. part of Bennigan's. Yeah, I think I got all, all the steak and ale location from Toledo, Ohio's shit on here or something from so nice. I don't know, but hey, it works. It gets us there safe. We got a great driver, and it's clean and nice. I don't have to worry about finding a bus. You know, it, it's I'm blessed that I'm even able to have a bus. You know, and not have to be paying all these rental fees and all that shit you're out on the road with skid row right now right yeah we're out with skid row and buck cherry and how's that going great. it's going great we're uh getting new fans everywhere we go everybody's digging the shows and it's a great little package of three bands and people you know a lot of people still we haven't even been touring two years yet they're still becoming familiar with us and Every night they're coming out, we meet with all the fans, and they're like, man, you guys have a different sound. You are like this rock and roll, like it's not other people the way other people are doing it, and it's really cool, and we're so glad we got to see you. So we're, we're, we're on our uphill climb to the top of the mountain. That's, what, that's my goal. I have, a, yeah. I have a question. How has your yeah. ability to sell T-shirts gone from zero to hero on this tour? Zero to hero. Yeah. Like, have you become like a master t-shirt salesman? Yeah, it's, we're selling more and more now. I mean, we've doubled now what we did on our last run. So we're, I can see the increase coming and people are coming to the table. We've got um, even more designs. I'm trying to keep my designs more of my style, my look and not date them with dates and all that. Um, there's really no need for me to put any kind of tour dates on a t-shirt until I headline. And I would just probably have one that I did that, but I just want people to be cool, feel the vibe of uh, how I am. I'm chill, laid back guy who's not afraid of the world. And 
I just want people to jump on my back. Let's rock and roll and let's be good to each other and uh, keep moving forward. And I think that's resonating with the fans and they want to be part of that lifestyle. And I think that's why we're selling more now. Nice. nice. I, I often think that being on the road is like an opening act or uh, like even just getting on the road, right? You're, are you probably playing casinos, I guess, with Skid Row? No, we're, we've been playing. We played, just played the Wellmont Theater, the Paramount Theater. We just nice. played Lynn Memorial Auditorium. So they're big theaters and auditoriums. Nice. We even nice. played uh, Rose Music Center up um, north of Dayton, Ohio. That was an outdoor amphitheater. So that that, that was, is a beautiful venue. I I know a photographer that works there, Michael, and he is like I yeah. seen, I've seen photos of that place. Beautiful. And that was kind of my hometown show because I'm from Cincinnati. So we had a lot. I mean, I, we had fans coming up to us after every set, you know, because I always go out and say hello and meet people. And that was a great night. Nice. Do you find it stressful, like, going on, out on tour like that? And then you get off stage, you have to go meet a lot of people, right? But as a right. singer, as a singer, you also have to maintain your health. Do you find it stressful? How do you deal with that aspect of, of touring? Well, I, I'm pretty, uh, I live in the rhythm of how, I, I mean, I pretty much know my body really well, and I just know how I, I feel. I take care of myself. I don't compromise my immune system. Um, I don't take a bunch of medications or anything. I just kind of, I like to drink water and vodka, and I like to smoke <laughs> cigarettes that have nicotine in them, and I like to smoke a little weed, and that's about it. And uh, I think that it really helps me a lot. I don't overeat or anything i had my gallbladder taken out in 2012 so that kind of changed my eating habits but uh, i'm a big believer in just living in the rhythm of your body and keeping your immune system strong and i was luckily born with that and doesn't phase me at all i don't worry about that shit man i just i go out and say hello it means more to me and to my heart and creates less stress to meet good people and see the smile on their face and that that alone helps your health, you know, when you know you're making people happy. So, yep. Nice, nice. Rena? Yeah. Well, you're also, uh, well, the, your your new single, Doom, is is basically written for your movie, Hellbilly Hollow. Can you tell us a bit about that project? Yeah, Hellbilly Hollow. Um, I decided to start a horror franchise after I was in Halloween, uh, the John Carpenter reboot reboot the first of these last three in 2018 and i with jamie lee curtis and i was actually killed by michael myers and i was oh really wow how many people can see yeah Yeah, i'm so fucking jealous man if you look at the movie i'm the gas station teller in the middle of the movie and uh, the teeth come out of my mouth i'm the guy laying dead on the counter and uh so i get the speaking line and i get killed but I so then I decided to do my own horror franchise, Hellbilly Hollow, and shot that. And uh, it's been a passion project, and it's taken a while, but it's out right now. Being looking for how who we want as our distribution partner. But for the final scene of that movie, it's so epic. I we wanted I wanted to a lot of our music's in that movie, and I wrote a new song about a year and a half ago, one night in my studio called doom and it was going to be the movie the the song for the movie but i also besides writing a cool song doom haunt you know scary that kind of shit i wanted to also put a message in the song because you know i I had my issues when i was young with certain uh, drugs and things before i was 20 and i know a lot of people struggle with it their whole life so i wanted to write a song for a horror movie but also write a song about the doom that you can create in your own life through heroin addiction or through cocaine addiction or any of these drugs now that have so consumed so many of our population and just you know bring attention to it in a subtle way without just throwing it right in your face so that's what i tried to do i blended the two and just came out and do a rock and tune and uh it's, we're going we're at radio with it now and it's picking up steam and with folks like you having me on i hope it continues to and uh, we got more to follow so that's a little bit of the history of why how and why i wrote do i think it's kind of yeah. interesting that addiction is like a horror movie anyways so it, it is it kind of works both ways and i never yeah. did heroin or anything but i've known people and family members in the past that, and 
I, I just knew their life was doomed once they were addicted to that. You can't, it's very, very few can kick that habit. And it, it creates a doomed scenario for your life. Rena? Yeah, it's, it's not, it's not great. I have to say though, that the name of the franchise seems to slightly lean towards Rob Zombie. Is it something that you are worried about? Or like, was it intentional? No, it's Hellbilly Hollow. It, the for this franchise is actual name of a, a haunted site in Alabama, oh. and then you can you could go to Hellbilly Hollow and uh, do their every October they're open all month and do other stuff throughout the year. And it was the perfect site to introduce these two characters. My character's name is Bull, and then my brother Tickles, and introduce how crazy we are and psychopathic and demented all in one fun little haunted attraction called a Hellbilly psychopath Hollow. Named Tickles. Yeah, that's my brother. He can't talk. He can he, we communicate. I'm the only one who can communicate with him and uh he's a creature to be seen and uh it's so quite there's a like a sprinkle of the hills have eyes. <laughs> oh, that's a that's a good that's a good parallel. And you know, even I'm a little messed up, but I'm you know, I got scars and I got a white eye and shit, but well, I'm just a crazy motherfucker in the movie. And then the next one, Hellbilly Hollow 2, we've already written. So once this comes out, I kind of look at it as the first Halloween, if you will, from 78. And it was just kind of, you know, the, that's what introduced John Carpenter's Halloween. And now 2 is going to take you back to kind of where we came from and where our family roots were and all that. So this is a good setup for that. And it's a fun movie. I think you guys will really enjoy it. I can't wait for it to go out. Are you guys doing most yeah. of the writing? Uh, Hell Billy Hollow was written by Bernadette Chapman, but Kevin Wayne, who plays Tickles, and myself, we uh, came up with all the kills and the scenes and the dementedness and the twistedness we wanted to do. And then Bernadette wrote this script, but then she was a little frustrated with me because I'd go on set and just get into this. I lived on set. Me and Kevin lived in trailers at Hell Billy Hollow for a month. And I just wake up, put on my little outfit, and just go, and I ad lib probably fifty percent of what you're going to see in the movie. So it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been involved in a, in a few indie horror movies. How hard was it um, to kind of finance it? And I'm I'm sure this goes over to music, but you have to finance it. Then you have to find distribution partners, go to all the like all the buyers markets and stuff. How hard has that been for you personally? On Hellbilly Hollow, it's been, it was very hard because it was kind of like everybody just filmed this movie. And then if I didn't take the bull by the horns, because we got such good footage for this movie, and then take it to post production and oversee all that and make it all happen, it never would have happened. So it was a, definitely a learning experience. It was a quick 101 to me on how to be a producer as well as an actor and not just be an actor. And then I just shot a movie in March with Lynn Shea from Insidious and Bill Mosley from the Rob Zombie movies that I star in along with them called Scared to Death. And that we, I produced, I'm a producer on that. And we shot that in LA in a month of this year in March. And so smooth, it's almost done. It'll probably end up coming out before Hellbilly Hollow, but that won't hurt Hellbilly Hollow because now I've, achieve that level where I'm acting alongside actors like Lynn Shea and Bill Mosley and starring in the movie with them as a character called the Grog. So I hope it comes out first and people go, oh, I got to see Kurt Dimer Bull now in Hellbilly Hollow. So, nice. so it, it's definitely gotten easier now, but Hellbilly Hollow that I'll tell you, I, that was, that was some stressful time. Oh yeah. The first, I, what was it like the first time you saw the bill or the cost for just the audio post? Oh, uh, I, I think I think I saw a bill for an audio post more than once. I, yeah. <laughs> I had to keep redo. I had to keep redoing stuff, and you know, I get duped by one company or get taken advantage of by somebody else. It's like when I, I when I started my my oil companies that I that I owned back in '99. I started above my garage, and it was just me. And I your had oil companies? Is that yeah, what you I said? Owned, yeah, I own oil companies. Start go check out Starfire.com. That's my oil brand. 
Um, but I started those above my garage back in 99 with little to no money from, you know, buying some, selling some rental properties. And I put that away in a little checking account and started those companies. And I had to learn people were duping me then. They were selling me crap or I had to figure out who to buy from, who not, not to. I knew the oil business because I had worked in it uh, during my 20s, but uh, it was, it's tough. And so I look at the music and business and the movie business the same way. And it's like, I didn't get back into this until the end of 17 when I got in that movie with John Travolta called Trading Paint and then Halloween, and then I started doing my own. So it's been very few years, and I didn't even get back into music until 19. Oh. And it's like kind of like I've been going to high school, taking my lumps and <laughs> getting beat up, and I keep getting back up because I'm a fighter, I'm a competitor, I'm chill and laid back, I don't get too worked up, and I will just battle you until the end, and I'm just <laughs> trying to figure everything out. So, And now you're on tour with Skid Row, which has to be fucking amazing. Yeah, our, our first tour was with Jeff Tate, and he's also is featured on one of my songs, Burn Together, that your fans can listen to. And you just go to YouTube, you'll see our music video and all that, or anywhere you stream music. And then then I went out, I went on Ship Rock, I it was one of the uh, stowaways. Then I went out with Ingve Malmsteen, and we conquered there. You know, who would think a rock band that's just playing rock tunes and would do well with just a guy shredding right but we got new fans there then we ended up going out with tesla then we went out with drowning pool then we did more with tesla and now here we are with skid row and buck cherry and it hadn't been two years yet so we're pretty blessed i have to say this tesla is still kicking ass yeah. what a band i was actually listening to them yesterday so, yeah, they kick ass. They're great, great people. And uh, Brian Wheat, their bass player, is my manager. Oh, I see. That makes sense yeah. now to me. Yeah. yeah he, he discovered us because we were out on tour with him uh, via as direct support. And then I decided I needed a manager that wasn't going to screw, you know, screw around with me and uh, somebody that wasn't from the system. Right. So, per se, somebody who built a band from scratch like he did. Along yeah, with Jeb and Frank, you know. So yeah, yeah. No, I was listening to Psychotic Supper yesterday. What a record! Yeah. And and I I know Troy's not with them anymore, but Troy probably had the best snare sound of the eighties, and and it still holds up today. It's just great. Yeah. Anyways, I'll stop yeah. talking about gear. Gear over. <laughs> <laughs> Before Rena starts bitching at you. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna get down the rabbit hole. Rena, what you got? Nothing. I got nothing. I was waiting for the gear porn to kick in. I was like, I have prepared to shut my mouth for the remainder of the. I'm gonna change. I'm gonna change it just a little bit. I don't think Chris has been part of this little segment here, but we got a little segment here where Uh we. I'm gonna show you a a picture, and you got to tell me exactly what's going on in the picture and what the next frame would be. All right, sort of like a little psychological whatever, but it does really well on, uh, you know, short clips. All right, cool. With that that being said, I don't think Chris has seen this, and this might be one Rena has not seen yet. So here we go. What's going on and what's going to happen? Tell me what's going on in that picture. Describe the picture. Oh, my God, this is interesting. Wow, I love this one. Yeah, great. Describe the picture. Tell us what's going on and what's going to happen next. All right. Well, we've got the dude on the left is just thinking about some bad shit in his brain (laughs) and he's not sure if he should take the high road the low road or be the little deviant that he is and the devil's right behind him persuading him to do the wrong thing that's the way i see that picture what's the next frame so the next frame would be because of the devil there, I'm going to say we're going to see what the guy's going to do. And I wouldn't doubt if he is sitting there staring. I can't tell how old this is, but let's just say it's modern day creepy dude. Mm-hmm. The creepy dude just sitting there probably staring, looking at some child porn. <laughs> that escalated quickly. <laughs> that escalated quickly, quickly, but fair enough. <laughs> well, I mean, that's the kind of fucking 
crazy shit that goes on in this world. It just blows my mind. Yeah, it's and awful. The, with the devil there, you know, you know he's up to no good. It could be anything, anything devious. But he looks like a little deviant, you know, <laughs> consumed by the devil, and he's doing something that he shouldn't be doing. Fair enough. I'm so, gonna I'm gonna jump in here. Don't take it out. Oh, like, oh let me gonna, no, hang on. The the I got a back. I'm like back I love in. these now. Like I said in the last episode, <laughs> I'm getting really good at this. Like, uh, first of all, we're looking through some sort of like a uh, shelf cupboard or something. Right. Right. Because there's this little fireplace on the right. It first looks like it's a picture frame, but it's not. We can see the uh like perceptions of it better when we when we look at the little fireplace with a little wooden s does it stand for satan for me this is 50 satan when you look at his jacket right I that was a dollar sign no that looks like sign. a dollar sign to me it could be a dollar sign yeah it could be a dollar sign this is even even better and the guy on the left he's either clergy mm -hmm. like he's a priest because he's wearing purple which is the color of the clergy or and that's what made me go of, to that porn thing, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I don't, I don't think you were very far off, you know, <laughs> probably. Because if it's the Catholics, then, you know, it's a done deal. But, yeah, this is this <laughs> could easily be a Catholic priest. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, I have no, no, no. Uh, it's okay. I'm Catholic, unfortunately, and I give you permission to make that joke. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, dude. I love you. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, this is this is super interesting because he does look like a creepy priest to me, and he's even wearing that white, like oh, yeah. bib thing that they do for some reason because they get so drunk on the the communal wine that you know it's it's good that you don't throw up on the expensive <laughs> purple, you know. So you wear the bib. It's right. Anyway, anyway, thank you for playing along. I appreciate that. If, yeah, man, that was fun. If fans want to find you, can you give us all your socials and your contact info? Yeah, it, it, it's Kurt, K-U-R-T, and it's Dimer, <laughs> D-E-I-M as in Mary, E-R, pronounced Kurt Dimer. You can go to KurtDimer.com. All my socials, Instagram, uh, X, now I think it's called um, Facebook, our fam club on Facebook. Everything's at Kurt Dimer. YouTube at Kurt Dimer. You can check out our videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we'll be putting way more content up there. KurtDimer.com. You can find me everywhere. There's link trees everywhere, or Google my name. You'll see photos from the red carpet, any of that kind of stuff. And on IMDb, you can check that out as well. So, pretty much anywhere you go on social media and our TikToks ramp up and up too. We're going to start putting more videos out on there. Yeah, it's hard to keep up with all that stuff, but yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot, but luckily I've got some good people around me that right. uh, special that, that can uh, help uh, keep communicating to the fans the way we want to be communicating with to them. And I do it personally as well. Like if, if you follow me on Instagram and you send me a message, I'm the one who's messaging you right. back. So as long as I'm capable of <laughs> in a timely manner you know fair enough so uh you guys got anything else rena chris no well I'm before good. i choke on this beer that i was drinking <laughs> oh i thought you were smoking a J. <laughs> not until we're done <laughs> oh <laughs> not until... but... <laughs> yeah you can't smoke weed till you're done working i don't ever no, do exactly. Right. No, totally. It's, it's what kind of beer do you drink? Like responsibilities are done. But we do need a bottle.